Hey everybody, it's Satora here, and today I'm finally, after a lot of planning, thinking, and mostly procrastinating, I'm going to be bringing you my Amara bill. This is quite possibly one of the highest damaging bills that is not a melee build, and even those seem to be going down in the damage charts as of now. And I would like to jump on the train before phase cast gets all popular and explain my phase cast build. But fuck face grasp for Mara. Um, basically, this build originated from face grasp and my hatred towards it, and therefore I decided that everyone is using face grasp. Well, why not make a face cast build that can rival the damage of face grasp? And I wanted to do that in both a mobbing sense and a bossing sense. So today I'm going to give you both a non-DLC version of this build and a DLC version of this build. This DLC version is going to have everything all the way up until the newest DLC that came out and a few changes have been applied because of that DLC. So right now I'm going to be breaking down the skill tree that you guys just saw on your screen. I put the skill tree up before this just in case you want to copy it and go along your way but I would like to explain to you all the meaning and reason behind the skills that I have put into this. Once again, these skills are going to include DLC related skills, but later on in the video, and I will timestamp it for you, there will be a non-DLC version of this just in case you do not have the DLCs and still want to output insane damage while not using the stupid kill of what we call phase grasp. So we'll just open this right up and I will go into explaining. So the first tree we're going to start with is the red tree. Um, I'm going to go take off my class mod so you guys can see the raw data of this. So we have zero points into anima. This is a change uh, from what we originally had. We I think we had up to three or five in the last build. We are putting zero points into anima now and that is because there are a lot more things that are going to do a lot more damage if we just take it out of there. So we have three points into steady hands. This is just for the nice two added benefits of handling and accuracy and then we have five points into infusion the five points into infusion is for the converted damage to make sure that we get enough out of our elements and that we have each and every one of our elements doing required amounts of damage and all of them will be able to take out any element or any enemy depending on whatever element they might be resistant to um, five points into infusion is a change from I believe we had three earlier two or three earlier uh, we have 5 points in the Tempest, this is for bonus elemental damage and bonus shock damage. We now have 1 point into Illuminated Fist and 1 point in the Wildfire, this is mainly just to get down the tree. If you felt like it, you could put those 2 points instead in the Anima, but I felt like um, Illuminated Fist and Wildfire were just a better choice because this doesn't really help you in any sense whatsoever. Um, now we move down to Indiscriminate. Indiscriminate is going to be our mobbing based skill this is going to be taking out everything mob wise for us and doing insane amounts of damage to make sure that we get through everything just as fast as ties the bond cut so we'll be taking indiscriminate along with us and deep well deep well is just for the bonus magazine size and we have one point in the catharsis so the mayhem scaling can take out large mobs uh with nice big explosions and everybody likes big explosions we have one point into sustainment this is just to keep us alive uh, next we will move on to the green tree. The green tree has three points into personal space. This is for the bonus damage, 54% of damage dealt. Um, and two points in the clarity, this is just to get down the tree. And then we have now five points in the arms deal. The reason for this is because I have just learned about splash damage. Actually no, I learned about splash damage quite a while ago, but I'm just now getting to explaining splash damage. I'm not going to explain to you the math behind it, didn't really look it up myself, all I know it does more damage than it did before. So we have 5 points in the arm deal for the splash damage. Next we will move on to the purple tree. The purple tree we just have 5 points in the heavy rain. This is once again for the splash damage as well as the projectile speed. It's very nice along with many of the weapons that we use. Because there are a lot of Malion weapons that go amazing with this build. So heavy rain is definitely going to be a requirement. And now we will move on to my favorite tree, the blue tree. This is going to have our phase cast. This is going to have everything that makes our phase cast so amazing. So we have one point in the do harm, three points in the fast hand, and one point into violent tapestry. We originally had three points in the violent tapestry for our status effect chance, but I'm starting to realize that this status effect stuff, it kind of just procs itself and you don't really need three points. You can put it in the other things. Uh, 
So we have one point to do harm and one point in the violent capture tree to move down the tree. Um, and also to give us bonus rush stacks based on our kills and our status effects that we do activate. We have three points in the fast hands for the bonus reload speed, weapon swap speed, and mode switch speed. Uh, now we move down to this section. We have three points into alacrity. This is new. This is nice. It's definitely going to help us, especially along with a lot of our Maliwan weapons, which tend to have a slower reload. So this is going to be fantastic to have. We have three points in the transcend. This is for the bonus critical hit damage that we can stack twice. This is amazing for bossing, and it'll definitely help you out in mobbing if you got good aim, which I do not. We have five points in the restless. This is to make sure that our action skill cooldown rate is as high as that we can get it. Uh, we want to make sure this is as high as we can get so we can continuously proc our anoints as well as keep our rush stacks up. We have three points in the from rest. Once again, this is an amazing build for Maliwan users. Of course, it can be used with whatever else, but this will increase our fire rate and then our charge speed for Maliwan weapons. We have three points in the laid bear. This is for our bonus damage. Um, this is going to be so we can use our action skill on enemies and then they take 25% bonus damage after we hit them with our action skill. Um, we have three points in the wrath. This is again for more de gun damage as well as even more gun damage after we use our action skill. We have one point in remnant. Now here's the star of the show. We have Avatar. This is this has been in all of the versions of this, and the reason being is because once again we want to make sure that we have our anoints propped at all times, and we want to make sure we have our rush stacks up at all times. So we'll be taking Avatar. Um, the choice on our phase cast. We have multiple different phase casts from Tandava to Reverberation, Deliverance, and Normal phase cast. We'll be using Deliverance. This is just to make sure that we proc our uh, elemental projectiles and when they hit they will then apply a status effect and that status effect is going to be a status effect with all of our annoyance added to it which is going to help us with our uh, guardian rank and keeping harmageddon proc as long as we can because of this skill that is why we're not really putting three points into violent tapestry anymore all right so now we are going to be getting into the gear required for this build once again this is going to be dlc required gear but I will explain later on in the video a non-DLC version of this. So let's just jump right into it. Um, so we'll get started with the gun. So most of the guns are can be just about anything that you want it to be. We are going to be focusing on an anoint, which is nice with our new anoint rerolling system because now you can just reroll for this anoint. But you probably have seen it a lot and maybe did not pick it up before, even though it has an amazing benefit to it. And I'm talking about phase cast 250. Um, after using phase cast, weapon damage is increased by 250% for a short time. For legendary weapons, we have the Chaos um, being one of my favorites. We also have the Chaosin, the Ionic Disruptor. This came out with the newest DLC and is amazing. I absolutely love it. I'm not very good at snipers, but this one I specifically enjoy. Um, the Unlimited Anarchy. This comes with DLC 2. Uh, we have the Atlas Replay. This came out with the newest DLC and the Raid Boss. Um, you can pick this up from fighting uh, the Raid Boss, and I think you can also fight the Seer for this as well. There is the Health Shock. This is amazing for bossing and mobbing alike. I absolutely love this. We also have the Free Radical. This recently came out with the newest DLC. I recommend you get a Times 2 version, but the uh, Times 1 version is just fine so long as you have this phase cast anoint. Um, it does insane amounts of damage, and as you saw in some clips earlier, you would see that it does fine against everything. Um, we have the Plasma Coil. I had a Face Slam 300 version of this earlier, but when the reroll system came out, I got a 250, and I finally tested it out. And I absolutely love this thing. I, I had it, I never used it, but now that I've used it, I absolutely love it. Um, I just recently got the Monarch. I've never really looked into getting it, but this is highly effective and i 100 percent recommend that you use this um you can farm for it it's great for you people without dlcs as well i love this gun it's so much fun to use um and we have the hellwalker the hellwalker was originally what this build was created for um that's why like in the first build there really was nothing in the malawan skills that i chose but now there's a plethora of guns that you can use with this and it's not just hellwalker focused um, but this still does insane amounts of damage and I absolutely love using it. So next we're going to be moving on to the shield. The shield that I'm going to be using and that supplies the most damage is the 
hemorrhaging revolter i i believe the hemorrhaging is just the prefix but the revolter shield um this means on depleted become shock and rage for 15 seconds now there are a few things that i i have not really seen much about but i figured out with the shield and i absolutely love it because of this so um you become shock and rage for 15 seconds what a lot of people are explaining is that you have 200 percent bonus electric damage for 15 seconds which is amazing with this build because your action skill cooldown is going to be so low that it will be up before this 15 seconds is done so you will constantly have this 200 percent bonus electric damage um and what's also nice about this shield is that when you proc it it also increases your fire rate and the fire rate is just absolutely insane now uh we'll wait 15 seconds real quick and i will show you what the fire rate is beforehand but overall the fire rate along with it makes it a lot better than the super soldier shield as well as the added 200 percent bonus electric damage as you can see the fire rate is a lot slower now and once we activate it it's insane it's absolutely insane um so i 100 percent recommend this shield but let's say you don't have this shield right now then i would either recommend that you get the transformer or if you're daring enough you can try the super soldier but you need to make sure that your super soldier has an anoint to it and that anoint needs to be on action skill and gain 50 percent bonus whatever element you do not have as your action skill element and your grenade element that does not apply for the revolter the revolter you want to have on action skill to start activate any effects that trigger on shield break or fill this is because this is going to give you 200 percent bonus electric damage therefore you do not need to have the uh on action skill and gain 50% bonus electric damage or whatever you do not have. Um, so that is why I recommend the Revolter. The Revolter is going to be the highest damage count for it, but if you cannot get this, then yes, either get the Transformer, the Old God, or if you can get an anointed version of the Super Soldier, those are the recommendations. Um, for grenades, it does not really matter what you use. Of course, an It's Piss is going to be the best. It doesn't matter how many times I farm for the It's Piss and how high the drop rate is, I cannot get an It's Piss. Yes, I know I could trade for it, but for some reason, it's just, it hurts my soul to trade for something that should be so easily obtained. Regardless of that, you are looking for an on action skill and gain 50% whatever element you do not have on your shield, which should be electric, but if it's not electric, then it could be corrosive from the transformer and your action skill you want to make sure that you have all three elements along with this so you like let's say you have an incinerator incinerary um, grenade you have an electric shield and then you want to put corrosive as your element and that'll be what you will be running and make sure that you can take out any bosses now of course you're going to want to match elements when it comes to fighting bosses um, the three elements are for mopping so when it comes to bossing you're still going to want to use the revolter over anything else and then you're let's say you're fighting grave ward you'll want an incinerary recurring hex um, and then you want an incinerary as your action skill element um i do not recommend putting any using cold hearted whatsoever it does not work with harmageddon and you're not going to be able to have enough time to use the benefits of cryo in the slightest because you'll be killing things too fast to even do that um for our artifact we are going to be using the pearl of ineffable knowledge i once again have a build right after this that i'll explain to you for you non-dlc hatters but this is going to supply the most damage um if you feel like it you can use company vents since those came out recently but that just does not supply the same amount of damage as the pearl of ineffable knowledge especially with some of the artifacts i will be explaining the pearl of ineffable knowledge is going to be your best option for the most damage now we are going to move on to the class mods. The class mods is going to vary between two, two class mods, well, three, kind of. So to start out with, the mainly used class mod is going to be the Phase Zerker. The Phase Zerker will give us the most damage, the most action skill cooldown rate, and it'll give us rush stacks upon using our action skill. This is going to be the most, like, the most dependable class mod, I should say. Um, and it's pretty easy to farm. You can just go farm one of the, I cannot remember which one at the moment. Uh, I will go check real quick, but if you're looking for a phase Erker, you will be going to the sky drown pulpit and you will be farming the boss at the very end of that. Uh, it doesn't take too much time and you can do it on mayhem zero because 
it does not matter what mayhem level you're on you will still get class mods with the same perks so that will be your main use of class mods but recently which i absolutely love and this is such a fun artifact to use or not artifact class mod to use is the last or the death's blessings i love this this is such a fun artifact to use i do not have very good rolls on mine but i got very good rolls on the skills um as many points into i believe that is wrath as many points into uh wrath as you can get yeah wrath as many points as in wrath that you can get is going to be mainly what you're focusing on but of course you want to get weapon damage um of any site and splash damage on as well um, but this is probably the best one that i've farmed for so far so this is going to be mainly used for bossing or not bossing mobbing you can use this on bossing if there's mobs around it but i recommend this for mobbing it's not as dependable as the phase zerker but it is a lot of fun to use another one which i do not have on me currently is the spiritual driver um this is a lot it's a lot of fun to use on bosses and for that you're going to of course want to switch your artifact over to a elemental projector but you can use um that as well for bossing it's not really that great for mobbing because you cannot keep up the cooldown and keep yourself running as quickly as well as you will not be putting any points into our uh mindfulness so those are going to be the artifact mods and or the artifacts and class mods as well as the weapons for the dlc version of this build and now we will start moving on to the non-DLC version of this build. So welcome all of my non-DLC users. I will be explaining all the skills you just saw previously in the skill tree so you will understand what it does and how much damage it does while also not getting too much in depth with the math behind it because I'm too lazy to do that. So let's just start with the red tree. We have three points in the steady hands for the added benefits of handling accuracy, five points into infusion. This is just to make sure that we can take out any enemies that are immune or um, have any sort of resistance to whatever elements we have on our grenade and shield. We have five points into tempest. This is for the extra elemental damage and definitely the extra shock damage. One point into Illuminated Fist and one point in the Wildfire to move down the tree. We have three points in the Indiscriminate. This is going to play a big part in the mobbing aspect of this build. Um, we have one point in the Deep Well. This is for the bonus magazine size. And one point in the Catharsis. This is going to be Mayhem scaled and helps us out again with the mobbing aspect of this build. We have one point to Sustainment. And this is going to be keeping us alive and there's plenty of life steal for what we will be doing. And now we have four points in the conflux. This is going to be a lot more beneficial, do a lot more damage, and supply us with a lot more bonuses to our Harmageddon than Anima will. So I recommend the four points in the conflux. And then we will be moving on to Forceful Expression. This is going to supply us with 18% bonus damage of whatever element that we are using for our action skill. Um, next we will be moving on to the green tree. In the green tree, we have three points in the personal space. This is for the bonus damage of being up close to enemies. We have two points in the clarity to move down the tree, and five points on the arms deal. This is because of the bonus splash damage, which I have gotten more into recently and figured out a lot more into, and supplies us with a lot more damage than having into anything else. Um, next, we will move on to the blue tree. The blue tree, we have one point in the do harm to move down the tree as well as give us more rush stack from whatever we will be doing. Three points in the fast hands. This is for the bonus reload speed mainly, but as well as the weapon swap speed and most switch speed are nice added benefits. We have two points in the violent tapestry. This is to give us enough points to keep our status effect up as well as not putting too much points into it that we cannot put it into something else that will increase our damage. We have two points into Alacrity, this is again to increase our reload speed, and then we have three points into Transcend, this is going to be insane on the bossing aspect because we can stack it twice on top of each other, which gives us the critical hit damage twice instead of once, um, but you can of course use this with the mobbing sense as well. We have five points in the Restless, this is to keep our action skill cooldown rate as low as possible, and to make sure that we have our action skill up as often as possible to make sure that our anoints are up as often as possible 
We have three points in the front rest. This is to increase our fire rate and charge rate, charge speed. This is mainly used on Malinois weapons, but of course the fire rate can be increased on any of the other weapons. We have three points in Delayed Bear and three points in the Wrath. These are both to increase our gun damage. Um, Delayed Bear is after we hit something with our action skill, and this Wrath is after uh, we use our action skill, we get 40% bonus weapon damage. Um, and both of these are just going to be primarily focusing on the fact that this is a gun damage Amara build. We have one point in the Remnant. This is to, for the overkill damage. And then the star of our show, we have Avatar. Avatar gives us bonus rust stacks on top of lets us use our action skill twice. This is going to keep our anoints up, keep our action skills running, as well as let us use Transcend to its best ability. So this is the star of everything, and I absolutely love using it. Now the action skill that we will be using out of all the phase cast options will be Deliverance. This is because it's the lowest cooldown. It has the same cooldown as normal phase cast, but also supplies us with three elemental projectiles that will um, keep our status effect up and running and make sure that we do plenty of damage in the long run. So when it comes to gear, there is a lot of limitations for people that do not have the DLC, but that is okay because there are still plenty of options for you to use, as well as the options I will be giving you, um, especially in the gun section, are just optional. You can try other guns as well, but this is my favorite and the personal best damaging guns that non-DLC users can have. So first we will hop into the shields. The shields that I recommend for this build is the Transformer. Um, the Transformer is going to be probably the best option of keeping you alive as well as give you some bullets to add to your uh, inventory and keep everything running smoothly. Um, I recommend the Transformer over anything else and is a lot of fun to use. Um, and mainly what you're going to be using for both the uh, the shield and the grenade are on action skill and gain 50% bonus whatever element you do not already have on your grenade and you do not already have on your gun and your action skill element. So that moves on to the grenades. The grenade doesn't really matter what you use so long as you have on action skill and gain 50% bonus damage of whatever you don't have on your transformer and whatever you do not have on your gun and your action skill element. Next, we will be moving on to the artifact. The artifact that I recommend for this is the Snowdrift Auto Idle. Whatever can make you go fast uh, will keep you running around the map, killing everything at a nice option. Um, I do recommend that you have the Victory Rust. I do recommend you have the Victory Rust prefix, but on a secondary, I recommend you have the Restores 23% of your max health after killing an enemy as the second option. Um, for the bottom three options, I do recommend action skill cooldown rate, um, magazine size is another option, and gun damage is probably the best option for this. Now we will be moving on to the class mod. The class mod that you will be looking at is the um, phase zerker that is going to be the main class mod that you use. But you can also use the spiritual driver. If you're going to be using the spiritual driver, you'll want to switch your artifact over to the elemental projector. But the spiritual driver is mainly used for bossing, not so much mobbing. For everything else, you're going to want to use the phase zerker. The phase zerker is going to supply you with bonus rest stacks, as well as give you a 75% increase to your gun damage, and a, and you will get action skill cooldown rate per rest stack, which is absolutely amazing. Um, for the weapons, now this is the fun part. Mainly you can use anything that you want, but you will be looking for the anoint. After using phase cast, weapon damage is increased by 250% for a short time. Um, now my favorite weapons to use along with this are things like the Rosen Storms. This recently got buffed and is a lot of fun to use. My favorite is the Health Shock. Um, the second favorite, the Kaozen. Then we have the Chaos and the Hellwalker. Those are probably my favorite to use. Um, the Decaying Ripper is not fantastic, but it's a lot of fun to use. I love using this. Um, damage wise, and probably doing the best damage for you is the Monarch. You can farm this and get a 250 phase cast version, and it's so much fun to use. Um, the Star Krakatoa is usable with this, and I absolutely love using this when it comes to beating the absolute shit out of Grave Ward. Um, so here are a few closing thoughts before I leave you off to do what you want with this build. 
<clears throat> a, I am not very good at these build videos, but I am trying my hardest to hopefully get more into it, and I'm hoping to bring out more content and hopefully bring changes to this build as well as uh, keep posting videos and demonstrations of what this build can do. Um, for everybody that will be using this build, I would highly encourage that you leave a comment and let me know if you want to use it. Um, if you do want to contact me, I will leave a list or a link to rest the shares discord. I don't really like giving out my discord uh, <clears throat> friend list or friend requests or anything, but you can ping me in there and ask me any questions. Um, I will be happy to answer them. If you want a save file, I will be putting it in there as well. Um, and if there is anything else that you guys would like to see, um, I'd 100% be happy to look at. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and please leave a like or a comment or subscribe or whatever else that a normal YouTuber is supposed to say. And I hope to see you guys around. Um, thanks again. See ya.